Yep. Okay, recording. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, welcome to In, In 30 Security. What, start over, stop, stop, stop. We're going to start over. Okay. Okay, let's. Okay, we're recording. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 93 of Security on the In30 Network. We are now trying for the third time Blab.im, which I, I do want to give them a little bit of a shout out because I like the service. It's just, I don't know, it's obviously it's beta. It says beta, so I don't know. We'll go from there. So we wait, are, a minute, wait a minute. A tech company that actually listens and respects the beta tag Beta isn't just a, a thing to get people to join. Like, oh, yeah, well, it's done, but we're going to call it beta just because. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, yes. Look, it, it's, it worked phenomenal last week. We really liked it. It did. And, and we're hoping for a way to monetize it that's not onerous or or anything like that. But right now it's free, and I'm, I'm nervous about how, lo how much longer free is. But we did get a lot of engagement last week, so we continue to try it at least again. So, so we wanted to talk about content blocking. iOS mm -hmm. nine just came out, like just now. So you're listening to this ne next week. You're gonna iOS came out today, Tuesday or uh, the, the Wednesday, September sixteenth, and one of the biggest features is content blocking. And they don't define necessarily what content blocking is, but they don't want to say it's ad blocking, and they don't want to say it's not tracking, but that's what it is. Yeah. So we, I think we spoke about this, but I think people are going to start calling you and asking, what is content blocking? And you have to give them, you want to give them the right response. And I think we can spend a few minutes at least talking about what content blocking is. Content blocking. Um... Well, really, when, when you think about the web browser, when you think about uh, your computer and how you use it today, uh, the websites, you request them, and they say, hey, here's a collection of stuff I'm going to give you because you asked for it. Um, now, when you get that stuff back, your browser can render it, as in you know, images, text, HTML, CSS, make the page look pretty. Uh, it can also run certain actions, you know, uh, like... JavaScript, like when you click post on on a Facebook comment and it just shows up, it just you know pops in there. It doesn't have to reload the page. That's JavaScript at work. That's a simple example. Most sites today are going to use heavy, crazy amounts of JavaScript. I know, for instance, Blab.im uses like a, a ton of JavaScript just to make this thing work. Um, and it's, it's no small feat. It has to run actual programs and software in your browser so we can talk to each other, so we can record us talking to each other, so we can click on the pictures and give mad props if you're watching live. Um, it's uh, JavaScript can be used for good or evil. It's like any other type of programming language. Well, let's start simple. We both run a blog. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't look to make money off our blog, but let's say we decided to put an ad in, right? You yeah. want an ad, you want a, a banner ad. You want a banner ad that just links to the EFF. You want to give an EFF some stuff. So yes. there's two ways to do it. One, you can go to the EFF, find their little link, their, not their link, but their image that they give out as, uh, as publicity, and you can put it on your website, and it will load. Or you can insert, and I don't want to use DFF in this example, but you can insert some JavaScript to say, hey, uh, put some rotating banner that's going to rotate between these seven sites that this JavaScript, uh, this provider is giving you. And right. that's really what we're talking about. We're not talking about the static ad. Well, I don't, I mean... I, I'm barely functional at writing websites. So when someone says, here, drop this piece of code in and we'll handle it, I'm good with that. The problem is, I don't know what it says. I mean, I do know, but I don't know where it's going. It's saying, go to this ad network and pull off ad banner one or two or three or four, but I don't know what those banners are. Right. Yeah, most of the time, if, if you want, and, and Google makes this trivial to do, if you want ads on your site, they're going to give you a piece of code, you're going to drop it into your website, uh, you know, you're going to pick the, the size and the shape and whether you want pictures or just text or, you know, Google gives you a couple different options to customize it, uh, but they say, okay, all right, we've built you an ad, 
copy this code and put it somewhere on your site where you think it'll look good. Copy paste and an ad shows up miraculously, magically. Uh, but it's not magic. It's when you load a site, Google is doing some essentially a really fast auction by computers and saying, okay, who is bidding the most to show up on this page? Uh, and the person that does, their banner ad goes right where you specified it would on your page. If someone clicks it, um, the person who requested the ad pays some money to Google, and Google gives you a little bit of a kickback. They say, okay, you know, thanks for hosting this ad. Here's some money. And the majority of the content on the web today, that's how they make money. That's how they stay in business is advertising. Now, let's take it one step further. Oh, you want like buttons and you want tweet buttons and you want Instagram buttons and all that. You go to the, each website, they each give you a script because when you click like, they have to make sure you're logged in. So now they're now we're adding some sort of tracking to the mix and we'll get to mm -hmm. that in a few minutes. So now you've put in tweet, Google+, Facebook like, uh, email, WhatsApp, all those little things. That's Pinterest. five or six. Yeah, that's five or six new JavaScript tags that you have to put in. Yep. So now it's fetching five or six more things. And when you're on a huge, a huge fast pipe, nobody really sees it. Like you don't really see the slowdown. But when you're on a Chromebook or a phone, that's when it really starts to pick up. Right. Uh, depending now, I have seen some sites that loaded, you know, two or three semi trucks full of JavaScript and tried to shove them down your your measly Time Warner connection and brought your web browser to a crawl. Um, but it's really, really apparent on mobile when that sort of thing happens. Uh, it's it's really easy to see, it, especially if you're on a, a 3G connection or, you know, God forbid, you're on an edge connection. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're loading anything more than just some HTML and some low quality images, you're going to feel it. it. It almost feels like we're going <clears throat> we're going slightly backwards. So there was a time. I mean, early on, where the operating systems just kept on getting bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. because everyone says, oh, RAM is so cheap, RAM is so cheap. And then all of a sudden, we got to a point with Vista requiring two gigs of RAM. And someone said, wait a second. And seven was way lighter. Eight is way lighter. Ten is way lighter. And they're getting bigger. They're getting more powerful, but they're being more uh, resource intense, uh, resource less intensive. Now we're seeing that with with uh, with uh, websites, they they're at the point where they're huge for no reason. No one is sitting there and optimizing it because they their side they can just dump JavaScript. You have a big pipe, you can get it, but on mobile we're kind of stuck. Yeah, uh, you are you're up to. Uh, you, you, well, I should say, you're at the mercy of your provider and the the radio signal around you, the cell signal around you. You're completely at the mercy of your environment at that point. Um, and certain websites that you know, will hand you six or seven semi-trucks full of jQuery stuff and animations and tracking and ad banners and like buttons and um, you know a, a cool animation of like a dog dancing or something. Um, that they've animated through a weird series of jQuery animations. Yeah, all that's getting shoved down to your pipe. If they haven't built the website correctly, it's even the first thing that gets shoved down to your phone. Uh, so none of the other content loads until all the JavaScript. Now, the so, so I'm not the only, to, <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not the only one that notices the ads always loads, loads first. Yes, and that is intentional. Um, they want the ads to load first because it's the first thing you have to see. If the ads take forever to load, or if you can just, you know, load the quick, funny image that you're looking at before the ad loads, uh, then yeah, you're going to look at the funny image and go, ah, ha, ha, okay, that was funny. Go back and find the next link on Reddit to click. Um, and you won't ever see an ad because, you know, you're, you're blasting through pages at a, a rapid pace. So, I mean, so... So on on the desktop, on the PC, on the Mac, we don't really have these problems. But we're, we're now focusing on iOS 9, which I said came out yesterday, or the 16th if you're, uh, if you're not watching this live. They said, okay, now we're going to block content. And, or con and, and what, we're really, what we're really talking about is we're trying to reduce the JavaScript. And we're saying, you know what? We really don't need all this, 
all, as you're saying, the semi trucks of JavaScript. We just want the content. Right. And it's causing a huge debate with, is this right? Is this legal? Is this going to, is this going to sink the free web and anything like this? And I don't, I don't think it will. I think we're going to adapt, but I think we have to explain, we just explain what it is, but how we should use this properly. Right. And you know, it, this is controversial. Uh, I'll say that it's not as controversial as the torrent episode we did um, where we, we riled some feathers uh, or ruffled some feathers. Uh, but you know, content blocking, when we say content blocking, it, it can be anything from, hey, that you know, weird animation thing where the page flies in from the side and sparks fly everywhere, and then there's some fireworks in the background of the text. Uh, we're not talking about, you know, that's the only thing we're blocking. We're talking about advertisements. We're talking about tracking that, you know, website owners sell. Um, you know, they're, they're getting kickbacks for tracking you and reporting demographic information. Um, now, well, I'm not saying it's, you know, by and large malicious. Most of the time it's not. Most of the time it's people tracking you to make a buck off of, you know, semi-anonymized information about you. Well, we know from the sites this person visited that they like gaming stuff, they like free BSD, and they also read my tech blog. Uh, so when, you know, Google shows advertisements, we're going to show them advertisements for, you know, Unix utilities and video games because we know they're interested in those things. Um, but content blocking does give the user the ability uh, to block ads, to block tracking, and ultimately to block the source of revenue to that website. Now, I'm not going to act holier than thou. I run Adblock on Android. I have uh, I have rooted my device. I run Adblock on Android. I run Adblock in my browser, and I do think it makes you slightly more secure. It's not a panacea. It's not going to you know cure cancer or keep you safe from everything out there on the internet, but it will stop the compromised ad frames. Well, and that was really the, the idea behind the, we wanted to talk about. We don't want to sit here. There's enough other shows that talk about the advertising hit and whether it's right or wrong. Right. We want to sit here and discuss why you why content blocking is a security issue and why you should really consider what you want to do with it. Just yeah. remember, remember all those restaurant flash ads? When you went to a restaurant, it gave you this uh, the flash intros, as they were calling. Yes. Okay, that was, I mean, that's an ad. I mean, it really is. It was Java, it wasn't JavaScript, it was Flash embedded. And mm -hmm. what happened? Uh, uh, Apple blocked it, so we didn't have it anymore. So they had to find another way to get you to the content. There was no way you had to click yes inside the Flash, the Flash block, the Flash, the Flash area. And now, when you have all these people running iPhones, they they weren't going to do it. They couldn't do it. They couldn't go to your website. So they had to adapt. Same with pop-ups. All the browsers put pop-ups in. And I think what people are starting to get annoyed is I don't think people are annoyed by the occasional ad, the banner at the top or whatever mm -hmm. it is. I think they're more annoyed by what we talk about the pop over. It's a pop up that takes up the entire page, and you have to find the X, or or it takes up half the screen, and then you have to, or install this app here, install our app, and get better content quicker, or whatever it is. Yeah. It's basically you have this you have this five six inch screen, and the majority is taken up by something you are not interested in, and you have to work to get rid of. It's it's really you know the, I don't see the issue with banner ads as long as you know they're not making noise. I'm okay with banner ads. The issue I have with banner ads sometimes is you know you you've seen it on especially uh, news sites love to do this. There's an ad in the corner. It's the square box, and a video starts auto playing with sound enabled. I don't care if the video starts playing. If I'm on a, a unmetered desktop connection, for instance, if I'm not tethered, I don't care about seeing, you know, the auto playing video as long as it's not making noise. But we've all clicked on the website where, you know, noise starts blaring. It's poor form. It's annoying. It, it you know, makes the web annoying to use. Um, these popover things where you're trying to read an article and then, you know, uh, like a brand of 
chips comes down and it's a bag of chips and there's a giant animation that takes up the entire screen or blocks the stuff you want to read and you've got to look all over the page and hunt for the close button and you know, it's that kind of stuff. We got rid of the pop-ups and now we introduce the popovers. Uh, it's just annoying and it's I know that Adblock Plus uh, has tried to say, and I, we can give them the benefit of the doubt. I personally don't, but they try to say, hey, we're going to allow ads that aren't horribly annoying. We're going to block the popover stuff for you. Um, yeah, that's that's one way to do it. I guess that's a, a nicer way to do it than blocking everything, but stuff slips through and you know let's not beat around the bush ad providers are trying to actively seek out ways around ad blockers let's i'll give you an example of a very famous website i think quora that's where yes quora, quora will you type in a question that quora has an answer to and they're generally the comments there are generally very high level, you can get a lot of good information. You go there, they give you five seconds to read, and then they says, log in. You have yeah. no choice, you have to log in. And I don't want to log in. I, I, I want to just get the answer so I don't have to log in. You don't know where I am. Am I on a public computer? I don't want to be hacked, so now I have to log into LastPass, I have to do all this stuff. I just want the answer. So people say, well, then don't go to the website. Well, I already went to the website. I'm already there. Yes, I can. I now have to back out of it, and I make it a point not to sign in. I probably do have an account. I just don't want to sign in. I just want the answer to my little question, and to go from there. So, same. Way, I think Pinterest does the same thing. Pinterest only gives you half of it, and then you have to sign in. And you know what? That's a bad experience. I'm not going to go there. You want me to go there? Give me something to do. Don't make me log in. The, the great thing about the web is in the majority of the cases, people are building it for search engines. They're building it for Google to go in, index a bunch of stuff, and hopefully it'll pop up in a search result that you have so you'll click on it. Now, to get Google to index it, they have to expose it in some way, right? They have to allow the Google bot to come through and, and look at all the text and grab it. And really, the majority of the time when we're looking for a site, we're looking on the web, we're looking for text. We're looking for the text articles. We're looking for, you know, the stuff the New York Times puts out that's not behind a paywall, that someone shares and we click on it and go there. We don't want to, you know, get this popover that blurs out the entire page and it says, oh, the New York Times is available for only you know, $20 a day or something like that. Um, with content blocking, you can take that piece. You can take the popover. You can take the please log in. You can take the stuff where, you know, they black out half the page or it starts to blur or white out as you go down, and you can just remove it. Uh, HTML isn't like a compiled language. It isn't just like a block of stuff that you get and you have to take it bar none, this is what you get, you cannot modify it. No, the web is malleable. The web you can control. So you can say, well, I'll take the text, I'll take the funny images, but the popovers and stuff, nah, nah, we can, we can delete that content, we can remove it. We can actually prevent it from loading in the first place, and that's what content blocking is about. Well, the issue becomes, and we, and we hear about this, so uh, the banner ads nobody clicks on. We, we basically banner ad, so we have to find another way. We've gotten used to just ignoring it. So they have to find other ways to be more annoying and to get your attention. And so then they start with, and again, um, uh, native advertising or product placement or something like that, which I'm not necessarily opposed to as long as it's obvious. But if, again, like a, just like a banner pop-up, if it's obvious, no one's going to click on and then we start with, well, why don't you donate some money to this website and we'll give you a free version or a limited version. The problem is I don't think that's not the solution. I think what happened, I think what we need to do is find another way to advertise. And I'm not a genius on this. I feel like I feel like we have to work on on really finding what people want and offering that to them. Or you know what? Ask them. Say, hey, look, we are free. We're, we're not going to give you really obnoxious ads. We're going to give you ads that we think are good. We're not going to do popovers. We're not going to ask you to install some. Take your pop up, your content blocker off for our site, and we will be happy with that. Let yeah. the ad load. And, and there, are, there are examples of successful websites that have changed their revenue model. So, for instance, um, 
Reddit is a fantastic example. They had, you know, one ad off to the side, a big square ad that most of the time users of Reddit would purchase that ad um, to show off, you know, a subreddit that they've created or a community or uh, even a product that they might have launched. But, you know, it's mostly driven by Reddit users themselves purchasing ads. Uh, same thing with, you know, the, the first story up at the top, it's clearly labeled ad, it's in a weirdly colored box at the top. Um, certain companies or users of Reddit would, you know, buy a, a story that they would link you to. It was part of Reddit itself, um, so it didn't take you out of the experience, so to say. Uh, and that worked pretty well for them, but they still weren't making ends meet, so they came out with you know, Reddit Gold, where they unbox certain features of the site, nothing major, nothing breaking. Um, if you never paid for Reddit in your entire life, you'd still get the majority of the experience. But for power users, it had some niceties here and there, and you could actually give money directly to the website. Um, it's, it's just one example. It won't work for everything, but I thought it was a clever solution to the, you know, uh, ads aren't quite cutting it problem. And a lot more websites are going to have this problem. Now, one of the ways, um, and this probably isn't the right podcast to talk about it, one of the ways to augment that is native advertising and something that I think is truly and ultimately evil. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure the In30 Proper show could cover native advertising. Yeah, well, we have Paul, whose sole job is to promote native advertising. But, right. again... Like Twitter puts their promoted tweets. Love it, yeah. hate it. Hey, look, Twitter needs to make money too. And you, we can talk about how they were evil and everything else. But they say this is a promoted tweet. Sometimes it's right. not obvious the first couple times you look at it, but it is there. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm okay because they market as advertising. It's not a, hey, uh, this is totally a tweet because you totally followed these guys. It says right at the bottom, promoted. It's, uh, it's an ad. I mean, YouTube has YouTube does put their thirty their ads in the front, and yes, they mm -hmm. are annoying. But you know what? If you pay YouTube nine dollars a month or ten dollars a month, they will remove the ads for you. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. Otherwise, look, you got to deal with the ads. And I don't think YouTube ads are that intrusive, unless it's a thirty second ad for a fifteen second cat video. Right. And that's that's the only time when I really hate YouTube ads. So with all of that, but we, we need to have it. So we, we have to find another way. And, I, and I'm and i not the smart one here to say, this is what it is. I just think ads need to get less annoying. And I think if ads get less annoying, more people are, are going to say, hey, you know what? I don't need ad blocks. Yes, there's always going to be the people that say, I want no ads. I don't care. Everything is free because it's the internet. But I really do like the the idea of saying, hey, look, of a website saying, hey, turn off Adblock, we promise you it's not going to be a miserable experience, and I'm more likely to do that. And on, on the security front, I think ad providers have you know, a, a bit to answer for as well um, in, in terms of keeping users safe from malicious advertising. You know, whether, whether that's malicious advertising as in you click on it and it sends you to a phishing site, which has happened. There are plenty of documented cases out there. Uh, or it's malicious advertising as in, hey, uh, we let this person upload Flash ads because we still support ads through Flash. Uh, and they loaded up a Flash zero day and infected you know, 10,000 people, um, which, by the way, has happened. Um, I, one of the reasons I block ads, that's not all the reasons. I'm not going to act like security is my only reason, but one of the reasons is advertising, uh, and especially from shadier ad providers or ad providers that give the advertisers more freedom than I think they should have. Um, they can run scripts, they can run active content, they can put flash ads onto a web page, and a lot of them don't really check the content. They just say, oh, thanks for paying us, sure, we'll show this ad to a bunch of people. And that can compromise users. That can really, you know, mess you up. And you might be on a totally legitimate site. Uh, I know MSN was one of the sites that got hit with a compromised ad frame. Um, it was just, you know, it, MSN, totally legitimate site. There's nothing weird about it. There's nothing wrong. It's a default homepage in Internet Explorer. 
Um, but it infected a bunch of people with malware because a bad ad loaded. That's not a good experience. We need to fix that. And then you have, and, and I think we, we said this, but we didn't actually say blocking content, blocking all those JavaScript pop-ups and everything reduces the size of the website and it makes it faster. Yes. So reduces you're getting... risk, reduces size, uh, it makes it faster. There are really very, uh, at least from the pure end user perspective, there are very little negative consequences of using an ad blocker or content blocker. Now, the biggest negative consequence would be your favorite website that exists solely because the ads are providing money might go away. That's a pretty big consequence. I mean, GigaOM was one of those. GigaOM, fantastic site. They had so much work in depth. They had ads, and all of a sudden, they just closed shop and said, we can't pay people. Yeah. And, and I... And my five dollars that I was going to pay, or whatever it is, wouldn't have saved them. It, it's a whole model that they have to do to change it. You're you're basically saying you're getting all the, these people have to eat, so they put ads, and they just have to weigh the ability of the ad, or or how many ads, or what's flashing by you, versus anything else. And unfortunately, when you make slightly more money by dropping another thing of JavaScript, it gets people more and more and more annoyed. Right. It's it's a definite balancing act for people who run websites because they think, oh, well, I'll just throw in an ad. And then they start making, you know, a little bit of money, nothing outlandish. Like, well, I'll just put in another ad. Well, maybe we'll just put in some tracking. Well, maybe we'll just throw in some sponsored like buttons down here. And next thing you know, your entire website experience is just trashy. It's just awful. Um and all of your users have went away to your competition because it's a pain to use your site. I mean, if you can remember MySpace, one of the biggest negatives of MySpace is that we gave people too much freedom to do whatever they wanted, and Facebook had this rigid system. And I heard it, oh, MySpace lets me do this and everything else. Mm -hmm. But you know what? People didn't want those flashy, those flashy backgrounds. So they moved away, and and they went from there. And, and – it's, I mean, tracking is a whole nother issue where they're seeing where you go from site to site, but it's, it's one of those things. We have to have some really smart people try to figure out the best way to serve the right type of ads, the right way to the audience and go from there. Right. We're, we're seeing an uptick in ad blocking, uh, iOS nine, most recently, uh, there's actually a telephone company that said, Hey, we're going to block it at the network level. I believe there's a lawsuit uh, underway for that, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, and uh, we're, we're seeing more and more that people, even regular normal people, are catching on to ad blockers in their browsers because it's, it's not hard to install an add-on. I mean, if you Google ad block browser name, a bunch of stuff pops up. I mean, it's so simple to say your friend goes, hey, I got this really cool thing. It's going to get rid of the ads. It's called Adblock or uh, Ublock Origin or Disconnect or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you just install it and it works. And then now in iOS, if you install this app, you're going to not have ads. And it's going to make right. your phone faster. It's going to make your battery last longer. It's going to, why wouldn't you do it? Absolutely. Yeah. And you're not thinking that you're not seeing the ads and not seeing the ads means they don't get the hit count and they don't see, and they don't know how many people are going to their website. You don't care about that. You just got another two hours from your iPhone. So, yeah, it's, it's an interesting debate. Um, if you would like to make your browser more secure, I would recommend running an ad blocker. Um, if uh, I, I've actually seen businesses install ad blockers in their corporate image to say, hey, look, we're going to just block ads company wide or block it at the firewall level. Um, a previous company I worked for blocked advertisements at the firewall where the traffic was coming in from the net uh, because we saw ads as a security risk, which they can be. Um, we actually had. Uh, before we did this, we had a user that went to Google, Googled for like an innocent program like FileZilla or something like that, something open source and free that people can use, um, and ended up going to a malware website and getting their browser compromised with some you know fake search engine thing. 
because they clicked on one of the Google ads uh, that was up at the top. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. I'll just click that first thing, result number one. It's an ad. Um, after we started blocking it, those problems just went away. Yeah, we have to wrap up now. But look, it, the, the short answer is if content blocking is going to be, it's it's coming up strong, you have to make a personal decision what you want to do. Or if you're trying to support the site, maybe there's other ways you can support them. If you want to be safer and secure, you have to really consider about maybe stall, installing something and and going from there and really realizing or you know what, every website you don't like, write down and make sure you never visit again. That's gonna also tell people, don't go to Pinterest if they're gonna make you log in, don't go to Quora, and then at some point they're gonna say, hey, we can't sustain this, and they may change. But I think something's gonna happen soon, it has to. Right. And there's gonna be, we're gonna be talking about the new thing in six months. As always. So anyway, we are over time, so we're gonna end it. We will see you next week. See you, everyone. Stop recording. Stop.